That's what we talked about last time. There's things called arrays and there's things called objects. If you need an array for something that you have, okay, let's start off actually when we have something simple like a variable x. If I have a variable x, then it's just like a single item. I can put only one item in it at a time. Problem is, what if I have a whole bunch of things that I want to have that are like, for example, student scores or something? I could have variable score one, variable score two, and so on. But if I had 30 people, my gosh, I'd have 30 different slots and I'd have to name them all. That'd be pretty ridiculous. So what I'm going to do instead of that is I'm going to have a single variable still called score, but I'm going to make it a new array of 30 items. And then what that gives me is that one variable still called score, but it has slots. It has slot number zero because we always start numbering at zero. It turns out that if you ever have to do a formula based on the index, starting at zero makes it really easy. Starting at one makes things god awful. Slot number one all the way up through slot number 29. So that's the idea of an array. Arrays are indexed by number. Okay, arrays are designed to go with for loops, okay? Now, you've never heard, I don't know if you've heard of loops before. Uh, my uncle taught me about for loops. Okay, great. So let's do a quick example of what, the, what this kind of thing would be. In fact, at this point, I think it's probably easier for me to pull this down and just um, project this because we're going to use these square brackets. This is something called the document object. Now your document is an object, but we can still use square brackets to index into it. And what we're going to do, use the index, instead of having a number, we're going to have the name of something that's actually in the document. And for some reason, I have this. Oh, well, actually, I'm going to need my template file. So let's go and find my template here um, from last week. Save this in this week's folder. And you'll notice, by the way, I have two other folders in there. If you already unpack this, there's already a zip file that has the um, information in there. So if you go to examples, you should see a link to the zip file and you can unzip it and you'll have everything. Then the template file you should have from the previous weeks. Okay, so I'm going to go here. This is going to be by me. So. And let's save that. And I'll save this as array1.html. So this is going to be addition of arrays using a script. Hi, and I are you, you here for Perl or are you here for JavaScript? Which one? 41. 41 J. Okay, I'm just talking about arrays right now. Okay. So what I'm going to have here, var, let's call this, um, actually let's call this data, equals new array 3. And by the way, the thing is I've been programming in another programming language all day, well, in the past couple of days, so I, I might be wrong on this, this may, might not be the way to do it. Does this look familiar to you? It we'll find familiar. out in a moment. I I trust you. <laughs> if it's wrong, the browser will tell us it's wrong. So in fact, let's just go in here and we'll see if I did it right or wrong. If it's wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. Boy, this is going to be the worst recorded video ever. I tell you. Okay. <laughs> oh. Ask me if I care. It's a start. It's, it's week one. That's right. And so here we go with web console and no error messages, so I'm happy now. Now, there's one way that we could assign things to it. We could say data slot number zero equals 20, data slot number one equals 31, and data slot number two equals 45. So I could do it that way. And then what I want to do is I want to have a variable called sum, and I start that off at zero, and I'll say for variable i equals zero, i less than three, i plus plus, 
sum equals sum plus data sub i. Now, that's a lot of stuff I've just given you, so let's analyze this um, bit by bit. So this thing puts things into the slots. In fact, let's go here. I'm going to raise this here so I can write all the whole This should work really well. So what I have here is my variable called sum has zero in it. Now what I'm going to do is this for loop is a way of doing this. This says i equals zero. If we were to do it as a flow chart, it would look like this. Is i less than three? We're asking a question. If the answer is yes, then we're going to do this part, the body of the loop. If the answer is no, then we're done. So if the answer is yes, we're going to do that, and then we're going to say i equals i plus 1. i plus plus is just a simple way, as a, as a shorthand way of saying i equals i plus 1, which adds 1 to i. Everybody okay on that? And then we come back up to here. That's why it's called a loop, by the way. So the for loop is one of these guys here. It has the starter, the test, the body, and what I call the mover. That's not the technical term, but it just moves you to the next part of the loop. So let's see what happens when I do this loop. I'm going to have I. I'm going to have to get a better marker here. So i is going to be 0. Is 0 less than 3? No. No? 0 is not less than 3? OK, we're having to do no, math today. 3 okay. is. Yeah, 0 is less than 3, which means we have to do the body of the loop. So we're going to take whatever's in sum, which is currently 0, plus whatever's in data at slot number i. Well, since i is 0, we look at slot 0. What's in slot 0? 20. So sum is going to be 0 plus 20, and that goes back into sum, so sum becomes 20. Now we come up to the mover, and i becomes 1. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it is. So we have to do the same thing again. And so we take data sub i, but now i, the index number, is 1, so we look at slot number 1, which has a 31 in it. And so we're going to take the current value of the sum, which is 20, plus 31, which gives us 51, and that goes back into sum. So we end up with 51 in there. Come back up to the mover. i becomes a 2. Is 2 less than 3? Yes, it is. So we take the current sum on a piece of scratch paper, which is 51, plus data sub i. Well, i is 2, so that means we have to look in slot number 2, which is a 45, and the answer to that one is 96. And so 96 goes back into sum. Important point. We know that that's the last time through the loop. Yeah, everybody in the world does, but the computer does not know that this is the last time through the loop. So what the computer will do is it will still go to the mover. I will become a 3. Is 3 less than 3? No, it is not. And therefore, we're going to continue on with whatever else I'm going to put in there. And the whatever else I'm going to put in there is going to be a simple alert that says the sum of the numbers is plus sum. And if I come back here and reload this, um, sum of the numbers is 96. Now, there's another way to see all this stuff rather than going through it by hand. One of the things you can do is you can use the debugger. And let's see, it says the page has no sources. Let me reload here. And once you reload, it will reload this, and then we can look at this, and I can put a breakpoint here. That little guy, I just clicked in the margin, and that's called a breakpoint. So now if I reload the page again, it's going to stop at that point.